Breaking news with hundreds of quarantine travellers being urgently moved to prevent a COVID spread. Also tonight, a car explodes in flames and jam city traffic. All lanes, both directions shut, causing hours of mayhem. Qantas cuts deeper, another 2,500 jobs to go and another blow to retailing hundreds of stores to shut. Major changes to the state's bushfire strategy, relaxing the rules to protect homes and lives. Fire and fury in the United States, violent clashes, our Seven News crew caught in a fresh wave of race riots. The new tool, keeping you safe from hackers while you shop online. And Seabold sack, but can anyone fix the Broncos? Live from Sydney, Seven News with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. As we go to air tonight, there's breaking news in the coronavirus crisis with hundreds of people being evacuated from a Sydney quarantine hotel. Andrew Denny joins me now from the Travel Lodge in the city. Andrew, what's brought this on? Well, good evening, Mark. This is news that has just developed late this afternoon. We're after reviewing operations here at the Travelodge Hotel here in Sydney's CBD. Police have decided that it is not meeting their standards as a quarantine facility for coronavirus, and as such, they are moving everyone out. That has sparked a major operation here this afternoon as they brought in buses to ship some 366 return travellers to 15 other hotels around the city. Uh, this operation is involving police and military personnel and we're told it's likely to run the next 12 hours. Now at this stage the reasoning behind it we're told is a long list of issues, chief of which police say is the, uh, the standard of accommodation for guests here. Mark. Andrew Denny in the city, thank you. Authorities are tonight threatening to terminate contracts with security firms involved in Sydney's hotel quarantine program after a guard who tested positive to COVID was caught wandering around Burwood. Meantime, police are maintaining their vigilance on the border, chasing a Victorian who illegally crossed into New South Wales and then sped off. For almost two months, a wall of police has patrolled the state's southern border. I've been to Melbourne in 14 days. But yesterday, one man rushed the blockade. 51-year-old Aaron Smith tried to enter New South Wales at Albury and was turned around. Instead, he took off, police giving chase, hitting speeds of 172 kilometres an hour. The Mazda was road spiked but travelled another 200 kilometres on rims before it ran out of fuel. There are people uh, coming to those checkpoints that all they want to do is get across, get to the other side. As he faced court today, health authorities announced more good news in the state's COVID battle. Just three new cases in the past 24 hours, one already in hotel quarantine, the others close contacts of known cases. One of those cases is a healthcare worker at Liverpool Hospital. The other case is a student who attends Our Lady of Mercy College, Parramatta. All were already doing the right thing and were isolated, unlike the security guard at the centre of the latest scare that's put businesses in Burwood on alert. Assad Niaz worked for Unified Security, enforcing hotel quarantine at the Marriott Hotel. It's the same company that was employed to operate some of Melbourne's failed quarantine hotels. Authorities say arrangements here are different. I think it's important that we don't link New South Wales with Victoria unfairly. We are reviewing it, but again, in fairness, over 80,000 shifts and two positives, statistically, it's insignificant. The company says Niaz was employed for the quarantine contract, but denies he was hired through the online sales site Gumtree. He has posted on social media sites looking for work before. Because of the repeated breaches, police have now taken away the guard's liberty. He'll see out the remainder of his isolation in enforced hotel quarantine, but the government won't go so far as to tear up its contract with unified security. The system is sound. If we ever need to change or do more, we will. Changes afoot too in South Australia, which is preparing to reopen itself to New South Wales. We think that there's a path to us opening those borders and we're hoping that could, could occur in the next two weeks. Andrew Denny, 7 News. The importance of Sydney's harbour crossings has really been highlighted today by a vehicle fire that closed the harbour tunnel in both directions. The blaze triggered traffic chaos to the north and south for almost two hours during the morning peak. Drivers stop and stare as fire erupts inside the Sydney harbour tunnel. 
The emergency response was activated at 9.05 this morning. Security video shows a Peugeot van heading northbound in trouble. Smoke and flames pouring from the engine. The driver gets out and walks away. There's nothing he can do to save his vehicle. This is probably the biggest real fire we've had, uh, but it's close to what we practice. The deluge system, like a heavy duty sprinkler, was turned on, dousing the burning van until firefighters could get there. Outside, smoke billowed from a bridge pylon's exhaust vent. Trapped drivers managed to stay cool. But something looked like a mist, and then the radio kind of blasting emergency message that we know that the sprinkler system was on. The tunnel was shut down in both directions for more than an hour, as fresh air was pumped in, keeping everyone smoke free. Drivers were eventually able to reverse out. This is what's left of the minivan. It's a charred wreck. Police will speak to the driver as part of their investigation, but it's likely insurance assessors will be left to determine what sparked the blaze. It's possible his fuel tank ruptured because we could see a liquid fire entering into the drain network. By 10.30am, the tunnel was reopened undamaged. A textbook emergency response that went to plan. Ashley Hansen, 7 News. We have more breaking news now. A pedestrian is fighting for life after being hit by a car in West Ride just after five o'clock. The 25-year-old man was taken to Westmead Hospital in a critical condition. It's triggered significant delays with long queues in both directions along Victoria Road near Falconer Street. Qantas is slashing another 2,500 jobs, now offloading ground handling operations. That's in addition to the 6,000 jobs already cut. The pandemic has also caused a bloodbath in retail, with major chains now closing up to 500 stores. An industry on its knees. The flying kangaroo, today admitting the 6,000 job cuts announced in June, aren't enough. Airlines around the world are literally in a fight for survival. We have to make some fundamental changes to how we do things. Qantas will outsource domestic ground operations, cutting 2,050 roles. 370 Jetstar ground staff will also lose their jobs. We are dealing with the consequences of one of the most spiteful corporate dictatorships that this country has ever seen. The union is calling for Qantas boss Alan Joyce to resign, accusing him of squandering half a billion dollars in taxpayers' money meant to save airline workers. We have to look for all the efficiencies and opportunities that we can. In a horror day for local jobs, retailer Mosaic Brands says it will close between 300 and 500 stores over the next one to two years after reporting a $170.5 million loss. Mosaic's 1,333 outlets employ 6,000 staff and include brands such as Noni B, Katie's and Rivers. They haven't been able to hold on to their bricks and mortar stores despite an online surge. Westfield shopping centre owner Centre Group says it's been helping tenants. But Mosaic says it's simply not enough. The retail rental market in Australia is fundamentally changed for the future. Some, though not all landlords, accept that reality. Fashion apparel and accessories has been way overspaced in shopping centres for a very long, long time. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Furious but fearless, more relatives of victims of the Christchurch terror attack have confronted the mass killer who took 51 lives. They labelled him a coward and gutless, but told him his murderous actions had brought the nation together. One by one, families and victims took the stand to take a stand, venting their grief and anger. I also want you to understand my utter rage upon learning that this man was a guest to New Zealand. This man is not one of us. Kyron Goss lost his aunt, Linda Armstrong. This coward hid behind his big, powerful guns and shot little old Linda from afar. Day two of the sentencing process for 29-year-old Christchurch killer Brenton Tarrant. You may be seated in the dock. And 30 more had lined up to express a dignified rage. This monster had no right to take my son from me. I have a life sentence now. You are already dead to me. Whatever punishment you are going to receive in this world will never be enough. I will never 
be able to forgive you. Tarrant, the Australian white supremacist and terrorist, attacked two mosques in March last year. Survivor Murwai Wazari told him it had proved Muslims weren't terrorists. But. They called him gutless, a coward, lowlife. He sat mostly distant and disengaged, but at one point was called out for smirking. When you get a free minute, which you'll have plenty of, hmm, funny, eh? Very funny. Maybe you should try to read the Quran. It's beautiful. 51 were killed that day, gunned down at Friday prayers. The last of their families and supporters will address court tomorrow. Once this victim impact process is complete, there's speculation that Tarrant himself could then have a chance to deliver a reply. If it happens, his words will be closely watched and possibly censored. The judge keen to stop him grabbing any opportunity to preach hate or extremism. Then the sentencing, likely Thursday. I put my faith in you, that you will protect me and ensure he never, ever has the opportunity to hurt another living soul again. Chris Reason, 7 News. The Prime Minister has again defended his aged care minister as a growing chorus of victims call for him to step aside. Scott Morrison says Richard Colbeck helped keep deaths at levels much lower than other Western countries, while Victoria's failings led to the current crisis. Oh. Insulted doesn't quite cover how Spiros Vasilakis felt as he watched aged care minister Richard Colbeck. We were more than insulted. I was watching it with tears. Tears for his mother, Maria, who died of COVID-19 at Melbourne St Basil's aged care home. Here was someone who was treating my mother's death like nothing. He couldn't remember a number. She wasn't even that much to him. As the minister came under fire in the Senate... I have done nothing order. but express order. my sympathies and the Senators government's sympathies. The Prime Minister accepting St Basil's was one of four homes that had... Absolutely outrageous and unacceptable outcomes. Again offering the families his government's apologies and condolences. Why? Is this minister still there? The Minister for Aged Care has been acquitting his responsibilities in those areas. Spiros Vasilakis's view? He's got to go. He's not fit for that role. The air of bipartisanship now shattered. Scott Morrison blamed the Victorian government's quarantine and tracing failures for allowing the virus to get out of hand and then called on that state and others to throw open their borders. To reopen Australia right across the country to live with this virus. Living with it while the number of aged care residents dying from it climbs. Mark Riley, 7 News. Former Prime Minister John Howard is on the mend tonight, recovering after emergency surgery. The 81-year-old was rushed into the operating room with appendicitis, his family close behind. Racing to her husband's side. Hi, Jeanette, how are you? Jeanette Howard arrives at Royal North Shore Hospital. He's doing very well, he's recovering. Yes. John Howard was rushed into an operating theatre after the 81 year old suffered a sudden attack of appendicitis. In recovery, he told us the operation went well. I'm very touched by everyone wanting to know how I am. We're very grateful to the hospital. Thank you very much. Yes. The former Prime Minister was supposed to have been playing golf yesterday, but he went to visit his GP in pain and ended up in an ambulance. I am fine. I need to take it easy and rest up. Our oldest former Prime Minister following the death of Bob Hawke last year. Mr Howard has always been a proud man. Liberal Party sources telling us the next time the public sees him, he will not be in a wheelchair. Instead, he will no doubt be walking with determination. The secret to good health for the indestructible, said to be out of hospital and back on his feet in the next few days. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. Landowners will be obliged to carry out hazard reduction burns on their own property under changes urged by the New South Wales bushfire inquiry. It's among 76 recommendations from the inquiry's report and the state government says it will adopt all of them. Tom and Jane Kinneen managed to save their Balmoral home in last season's bushfires. A blaze that ripped through the village and onto their property. It was on our fence line. It was yep. all through our front gardens, side gardens. They welcome landholders being obliged to conduct hazard reduction. 
there's probably going to be a few people that are scared of fire and they don't want that onus, but you've always got the bushfire brigade to back you up. Mandatory land clearing, one recommendation from a new report into our recent mega fires. The government hinting that could include national parks. My main concern is, and I need this made very, very clear, is life and property. The report recommends more local control over the use of backburning. It does look like they've listened to a lot of um, what captains and so on were saying. Um, that failed us during that last fire season. Calling too for a trial of nighttime aerial water bombing. Not just the scars in the landscape, but the human scars as well. The report recommends more be done about the lasting mental anguish bushfire leaves behind. Firefighters trying to move on. It changes a lot for people. Um, what normal we had doesn't exist anymore, so we're all creating a new normal. After a devastating fire season, we're warned is likely to happen again. Chris Mark, Seven News. Fires, looting and tear gas have filled another American city tonight at Flashpoint after the shooting of an unarmed black man. Jacob Blake survived. Now months after a wave of violence hit the US, his family is pleading for calm. Police and a city under an all-night siege as another American community vents its fury. What was a political demonstration just a couple of hours ago has now just turned into willful destruction. Torching and looting, they faced off with riot police and local militia playing cat and mouse with crowds long after curfew. Police might be outnumbered here by demonstrators, but these protesters, they are no match for the military might on display here tonight. We just out here making sure that this police is held accountable for what they did because it wasn't right. This is what he's talking about. Jacob Blake shot seven times in the back, unarmed with his three kids in the car. And they literally sat in the car and saw that officer grab Jacob by his t-shirt and turn his head and just off as many times as he felt like it. The officers who'd responded to a domestic violence call out are now on leave as the investigation begins. Let me be clear, this was not an accident. This wasn't bad police work. This felt like some sort of vendetta uh, being taken out on a member of our community. A community that burned last night, buildings and car yards torched. Tonight, simmers again, on edge, as protesters await answers. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, David Woywood, 7 News. Police are hunting a knife-wielding would-be robber who tried to hold up a Cogra bank this morning. He went into this Westpac on railway parade just before 10.30am and demanded cash. Staff activated security screens before he ran off empty-handed. Police interviewed workers at nearby shops and are still searching for the man. One Nation's Mark Latham has slammed the New South Wales government for rejecting his plan to repeal a ban on uranium mining. He's accused the Environment Minister of being anti-jobs after senior Liberals overturned a deal to support the bill in Parliament. The Premier confirms the government's deal with One Nation is off. Our Cabinet will be, will be um, recommending to the party room that uh, Mr Latham's bill be not supported. Deciding last night not to back his plan to lift the state's ban on uranium mining. The problem for this government's not yellow cake, it's the yellow streak running up the spine of the government where they're too gutless to do anything of any significance. Mark Latham was assured Nationals leader John Barillaro would secure cabinet support. We are in coalition, I have to respect what the Liberal Party wants to do. Several Liberal ministers opposing the idea during heated debate, some worried about scare campaigns in their electorates. It's a government paralysed by nervous Nellie's indecision. The Environment Minister singled out after he publicly questioned the viability of the industry. This guy is out of his league, he's got no idea about how to create jobs and he should be out of the Cabinet. The Deputy Premier has been asked to come up with the government's own legislation instead. He'll then have to convince his colleagues to support it, which is far from guaranteed. It's understood the new plan would only allow uranium mining in specific zones with sensitive areas, including near the coast, ruled out. I'll bring back my own bill as the mining minister. I'll take that through the cabinet process. I won't preempt where that may land. Alex Hart, 7 News. Time now for a check on our weather. Here's Brownie.
Thanks very much, Virgo. Well, the sunny weather just keeps on keeping on, and so do the frosty starts in the short term. At the moment in our city, you'll notice it's sitting on 13 degrees. Now, frost played a big part across our state this morning. Glen Innes on the northern tablelands dropped down to minus 7 degrees. You'll notice it was minus 8 in Threadbow during the early hours of the morning. Now, frosts are forecast to return to most of the Sydney Basin tomorrow. Sub-zero in the outer west, of course, fueling severe frost but uh, sunshine will fill your Wednesday according to the latest modelling just light winds expected throughout the entire day and temperatures at the moment well it's 12 degrees in Penrith Terry Hills is down to 10 Manly sitting on 13 degrees detailed local forecast top of the hour for go. okay David thank you Donald Trump has officially accepted his renomination, hoping for four more years. Next, why the president had a radical break with tradition. Why a Sydney uni lecturer who stabbed six teenagers was found not guilty. A baby trapped in near 50 degree heat, how a hero officer broke in just in time. Taking the risk out of online shopping, the Australian first safeguarding your privacy. And in sport exclusive, a former Bulldog star shame over a school sex scandal. Welcome back. A former university lecturer accused of stabbing six teenagers has been found not guilty in court today. Shannon Brett Morrison attacked the teenagers aged 15 to 19 in a Taramara Park in January last year. This case really does highlight mental health, doesn't it? The jury found the 35-year-old not guilty on the grounds of mental illness. Donald Trump has taken centre stage in Charlotte, the main act, as Republicans kicked off day one of their convention. The US president officially accepted the nomination for four more years, joking it should be longer, as he warned about disaster if the Democrats steal his job. This convention will come to order! Socially distanced, the Republicans roll call with an inevitable result. The only surprise, the president appearing in person in Charlotte. Four more years. Now, if you want to really drive him crazy, you say 12 more years. After panning Democrats for a gloomy convention, starting his with a warning. The only way they can take this election away from us is if this is a rigged election. Again claiming mail-in voting would mean widespread fraud. They're using COVID to defraud the American people. Donald Trump stopping for crowds at an airport. This has been a, a real love fest. Visiting a food bank with daughter Ivanka, firing up supporters. It was spectacular, it was energising, he's not sleeping in his basement. Donald Trump is breaking with tradition to appear every night at this week's convention and when he's not appearing and speaking, it'll be his family members in the spotlight. Embracing the man who represents a bright and beautiful future for all. Talking law and order, the couple who pulled guns on Black Lives Matter protesters. Your family will not be safe in the radical Democrats' America. Frontline workers and released hostages. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great stories. A reminder, it's not just his party and his campaign, but this week, it's his show. In Charlotte, North Carolina, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. Doctors in Germany have confirmed what many already believed Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was poisoned. After being flown to Berlin in an induced coma, doctors found he'd ingested a toxin that can be used to treat Alzheimer's, but can also be used in nerve agents. As Russia showcased its military strength, it's fueled speculation. Vladimir Putin was behind silencing his main critic. Navalny is expected to survive. Dramatic scenes in Texas as an officer smashed his way into a family car to save a distressed baby girl. Hey. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I know. I know. What's the matter? I know. I know. She'd been locked in the car where the temperature had risen to almost 49 degrees. The child's mother and grandmother arrived back shortly after. The incident is now under investigation. The world's fastest man has been halted by coronavirus. Jamaica's health minister confirming Usain Bolt has tested positive. He held a party for his 34th birthday just days ago and decided to get a test and isolate before heading overseas. Just to be safe, quarantined by yourself and just to take it easy. And just to make people know, be safe out there. All right? Cool. 
The Jamaican Prime Minister says the circumstances of Bolt's party are now under investigation as they begin contact tracing. Notorious con man Peter Foster has fronted court charged over a major scam. Next, why police say he needs to stay behind bars. What caused a truck to tip in Surrey Hills bringing down power lines? The shocking moment a police officer investigating a drink driver is hit by another one. And a brave young boy joins his real life heroes on a ride to remember. Welcome back. Two senior constables accused of filming themselves having sex with a teenage girl have been granted bail. It's alleged the two married officers were patrolling a train station when the girl was approached. Partners at work and in crime, according to their colleagues. Senior constables James De Nicholas and Angelo Delosa are in the same place. They sent criminals. How has his time in custody been? Oh, look, I'm not going to say anything at the moment. Charged with attempted rape, carrying a maximum two decades jail. It's alleged the two married officers were patrolling Cabramatta train station when De Nicholas approached a 17-year-old girl in her school uniform. They exchanged details before agreeing to meet up. De Nicholas paid for a hotel room while Delosa waited outside in a marked car before joining them inside. She was a person who agreed to go to the hotel to consensually have sex, De Nicholas's lawyer said. A thorough internal police investigation disagreed. It's claimed the pair filmed it on their mobile phones. A strong prosecution case, the court heard, with the alleged victim giving two statements to police. Delosa's lawyer said my client's moral culpability was lower because he didn't procure the girl. The magistrate agreeing to release them on strict bail. There has been a level of secrecy since these officers were arrested in August and the court was told of that today. News of them being charged came late in the day, meaning the media couldn't attend their first court appearance and today's bail application was brought forward by three weeks. They'll return to court in October. Leonie Ryan, 7 News. Former New South Wales RSL President Don Rowe has won his appeal against a fraud conviction. The judge said claims of corporate card and phone misuse should be resolved internally by the RSL, saying his original charges were argued by Crown prosecutors without evidence. Mr Rowe's lawyers are now pursuing costs. Notorious con man Peter Foster has faced court charged over a Bitcoin scam. He was extradited from Cairns after he allegedly swindled a foreigner out of nearly $2 million worth of cryptocurrency. Foster didn't bother applying for bail as he prepares to defend himself against a long list of charges. Peter Clarence Foster is swapping his tropical shirt for less festive prison greens. A bail application today would have been asking the court to trust him. The serial con man opted against that and police would fight it regardless. We need to keep the community safe and uh, we would be asking that bail be uh, opposed in this instance, yes. Foster's alleged victim is retired Hong Kong fighter pilot Konstantinos Stylianopoulos, who placed $1.7 million with online betting agency Sports Predictions. An emerging industry that is experiencing a boom greater than anything the world has ever seen before. Sounds too good to be true and police say it was. In April last year, the victim deposited huge sums of Bitcoin to Sports Predictions boss Bill Dawson. That was allegedly Foster, promising to lay the bets but simply pocketing the money for himself. The 57-year-old is charged with 15 counts of fraud and one count of dealing with the proceeds of crime. Undercover cops crash-tackled him on the beach at Port Douglas on Thursday. He was extradited from Cairns via Brisbane yesterday. That's the most beautiful question any journalist has ever asked me. Before providing the in-flight entertainment on his extradition to Sydney. Cocky and funny, it was good to listen to, yeah. Yeah, it was alright, yeah, he sort of didn't really care much. Foster will face court again on October 22. His sports predictions website is still up and running, and so is its slogan, we make money out of other people's mistakes. Robert Ovadia, 7 News. A truck transporting a crane toppled onto its side in Surrey Hills early this morning. It overturned on Commonwealth Street and brought down power lines as it fell. No one was injured, but power had to be cut to dozens of homes and businesses. The site was cleared by 2.30 this afternoon. A policeman's been injured after two alleged drunk drivers collided. The officer was investigating one possible DUI on the side of a highway in Georgia when another drunk driver hit his car, sending the policeman and the woman flying. Extra police were called in to investigate. No one was seriously hurt. 
New South Wales Police inducted a special new recruit today, welcoming a very brave young boy into the force. At just six, Mitchell Ray is used to fighting bad guys, spending the last seven months battling a rare and aggressive cancer. On the beat with the boys in blue, Mitchell Ray is one little ray of sunshine, bright, bubbly, clearly not camera shy. He loves the spotlight. The brave six-year-old is battling terminal neuroblastoma. This a chance to break free from treatment for a day. I loved it. This will be the most rewarding job that this crew will do this year. Officers showing their newest recruit the ropes, taking a ride to remember with highway patrol, cruising the harbour with the marine unit and a chance to get his hands on police rescues, tools and gadgets. Cool. cool. It's very cool. Diagnosed with stage 4 cancer in January, Mitchell relapsed after several months yeah, of right. chemotherapy and surgery. We're just on a regime to get more time now. While days like today are a highlight for the Ray family, others are much tougher. And with Jeremy and Erin currently unable to work, they are fundraising so they can try to make the most of every day they have left together. It would be heartbreaking to have to go back to work while Mitchell's still going through the treatment that he is. We really just want to make the most of our time together and make sure we've got these memories. Details on how you can donate are on the 7 News website. Amber Laidler, 7 News. It's often thought drinking a small amount of caffeine is safe during pregnancy, but next, the new warnings for women, why just one cup could cause complications. The new tool protecting you from dark web hackers while you shop online. Which new restaurants are set to join the menu at Crown Sydney? Soon in sport, the Broncos to sack Anthony Seabold, find out who's in line to replace him. A dry close to winter is building, but what about spring? Details soon. Welcome back. Seven West Media, the owner of this network, has announced a $162 million loss for the last financial year, hit hard by a weak advertising market in the pandemic. The company has substantially cut its operating costs on sports rights and used the sale of assets to help pay down debt. Chief Executive James Warburton says Seven is ready to bounce back strongly. These results provide a clear pathway back to leadership, underpinned by our long-standing strength in news, current affairs and sport. Shares in Seven West were down in today's trade. Checking the market, the ASX 200 has lifted 32 points. Uh, banking stocks were our top performers. All of the big four gaining ground. Fashion retailer Mosaic Brands fell 26%. On the back of news, it'll close up to 500 stores. And our dollar is buying 71.74 US cents. Fuel prices are increasing across Sydney. The average is $1.44.2 a litre. We found regular unleaded for just $1.6.9 in Dudeside and $1.9.8 in Clavelli. Crown has announced three more dining venues set to open at its Barangaroo Casino complex. They will include a traditional Cantonese restaurant, cocktail lounge and open kitchen dining space. We've got a fantastic lineup of chefs, uh, both international and local. The hospitality precinct is set to open in December. A new study has found there is no safe level of caffeine for pregnant women. It advises expectant mums to steer clear of coffee and chocolate to protect against dangerous conditions. As mum to energetic twin girls, Diana Newman relies on coffee for that extra boost. But she struggled to give it up during her pregnancy. Just really tired all the time. Um, obviously I did have withdrawal symptoms over the first few days. Diana followed current advice that recommends just two cups or 200 milligrams of caffeine a day for pregnant women. But according to new research, even that might be too much. What this new research is suggesting is that maybe we should change the guidelines instead of saying it's OK to have small amounts to be saying that we shouldn't have any. International researchers have analysed more than 1,200 studies and found caffeine increased an unborn baby's risk of miscarriage, stillbirth, lower birth rate, childhood acute leukaemia and obesity. It found when unborn babies are exposed to caffeine, they don't have the ability to metabolise it. It's not just coffee that's of concern. Everyday items like herbal teas, energy drinks and even chocolate are also high in caffeine. 
and it's hard to say completely cut out but certainly minimise it as much as possible. A small price to pay for the health of your little one. Jodie Lee, 7 News. A new art installation was made public in South Everly today. The precinct, named Interchange Pavilion, was curated by Carriage Works and inspired by the rail history of the area. The sculpture is made up of 14,000 pieces of hardwood and 250 metres of stainless steel. With online shopping on the rise, so too is cybercrime. But there's a new tool to keep your private information and credit cards safe from dark web hackers. Don't miss that online safety exclusive soon in 7 News. But now Mel is here with Sport. And Mel, big changes are coming to the Broncos. They are, Fergo. Anthony Seabold is on the way out. Who's in line to come in to try to turn things around? More details up next. Plus, exclusive Corey Harawira Naira on the school sex scandal, his suicidal thoughts and turning his life around. And the Aussies touched down to COVID tests and a bio bubble on their England tour. Welcome back. The ruthless business of NRL coaching has claimed Anthony Seabold as its fifth victim this year. The Broncos coach will address his players and media tomorrow. Seabold finally reached the point of no return in a shambolic season. After 14 days isolation, Anthony Seabold returned to the Broncos at 5 o'clock this morning. He went home by 7.30. Something had to give. I can't sack all the players, so they had to sack the coach. The push for a $1 million payout in club owner News Limited's papers and this from their biggest private shareholder with the end. If there's a disease there, like like you get cancer, you've got to treat it. You'd, but they haven't cut it out. I think it's too strong to say that he was a cancer. We've almost become one of the easy beat clubs and I just never thought that was possible for the Bronx. The powerhouse had become pitiful, lost 12 of their past 13, many floggings, while Seabold dealt with a vicious social media campaign. Old teammates want Kevin Walters to start fixing the mess tomorrow. I think they just need to chill and um, yeah, Kevy can bring that calming, as I say, that calming effect. I think what he can do is mend the fences. League's never been so cutthroat. Moses M. is one of several highly paid Tigers being shopped around. When you're a player on the higher end pay bracket, it, the criticism's warranted and, and I think that's fair. Corey Norman's heard it at the Dragons too. I'm contracted here next year, so um, yeah, I want to stay. They might only have five games left to change opinions. I think players have become quite resilient to the fact that there's so much shifting and moving in their competition now. Matt Carmichael, 7 News. Corey Harawira Naira says he quit the Bulldogs because he didn't deserve to wear the jersey after the pre-season sex scandal in Port Macquarie that jeopardised his and Jaden Ockenbaugh's careers. Harawira Naira contemplated suicide before his Canberra lifeline. Thankful for his second chance, Corey Harawira Naira wants others to avoid the mistakes he's made. I should have learned from other people's mistakes what I did and because of that I ended up where I was. Sacked from the Bulldogs and deregistered by the NRL over the schoolgirl sex scandal, family members feared the 25-year-old would take his own life. I was getting those kind of thoughts. I broke down like that. Um, you know, I was on my haunches in my room. My sister came and she didn't know what to do. Initially, Harawiranara couldn't see why he was punished so harshly. I didn't go to the school where those girls were. In my head, I didn't feel like I'd done anything wrong, but obviously I had, and I brought the, brought the game down, brought the club down. When his deregistration was overturned on appeal, Harawira Naira knew he had to leave the Bulldogs. What was the reason behind you saying you never wanted to pull on a Bulldogs jersey ever again? I didn't feel like I deserved to after what I put the club through. It was just crap for me. He says he's deeply sorry, but accepts that may not be enough for some. I do understand we have you know, a lot of family and um, parents, their disappointment and you know, giving me a realisation that I really need to grow up. He's enjoying a fresh start at the Raiders, but under the terms of his release, Harawira Naira has to sit out Sunday's Bulldogs Raiders game. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. The Aussie men's cricket team has arrived in the UK to face the reality of a biosecure tour. They went straight from the tarmac to have COVID tests and a safety briefing. They'll stay and play at the ground in Southampton. English veteran Jimmy Anderson needs one wicket tonight to become the first paceman to 600 in test history. 
Boomers coach Brett Brown has been sacked by Philadelphia after their first round exit from the NBA playoffs. The LA Lakers wore their black Mamba uniform against Portland, a tribute to the late Kobe Bryant. LeBron James was fired up on and off the court. LeBron takes a deep three. Oh my goodness. To see um, what continues to happen with the police brutality towards my kind is very troubling. The Lakers won by 20 points to take a 3 1 series lead. Corruption claims have added spice to the big fight between Jeff Horn and Tim Zhu. After the weigh-in in Townsville, Horn's trainer Glenn Rushton questioned the objectivity of Judge Phil Holiday. Apparently told a friend that he believed Tim Zhu would win the fight, so that, that is of concern to us. To question someone's integrity on, on, a, on a national stage like this is actually disgusting. Yeah, the pair clash tomorrow night. Plenty already to be fired up about. It will be a big one. They don't seem to like each other too much. Both camps, not just the fighters. A lot of talent, but a lot of feeling as well. Correct. Okay, Mel, thank you. Cybercrime costs us all tens of billions of dollars each year. And no matter how you use the internet, any Australian can become a victim to criminals lurking in the shadows of the dark web. But now the technology used to catch them is catching up. No matter what you're doing online, the chances of having your personal information stolen have never been higher. Eva Gordon knows only too well after discovering her credit cards had been drained in April to the tune of $1,500. It was scary that it can just happen so easily. But she still has no idea how. The description was something like pleasurable on poi, so... Obviously, I ran into the study and I asked my husband, have you been spending money on something? He hadn't. Lucky her bank agreed, refunding her money after a two-week investigation. To help you stay one step ahead of the thieves, software companies are offering solutions, especially for the dark web. All sorts of your personal information can be found on the dark web. We're launching our dark web monitoring powered by LifeLock to the Aussie market. Here's how it works. Users give Norton all their personal information. It then scours the dark web looking for matches. When it finds someone offering that same information for sale, it sends an alert to the customer. Well, it's fair to say there'll be a significant number of people unwilling to hand over their account numbers, password and private information to a firm, trusting them with their sensitive information. It's also true to say that the threat from online criminals will only get more serious. If you don't want to pay to subscribe to Norton, the advice from cyber experts is to change your passwords regularly. Evan Batten, 7 News. David is back now with the latest forecast. Brownie, another nice day in the sun. How's the rest of the week looking? Oh, I think it'll be dry and clear, Fergo. Frosty first thing tomorrow, but the days, they're warming up. Details straight after the break. Hello, tonight on The Latest, Victoria's power play. Can Dan Andrews' state of emergency extension succeed? Fire and violence. We'll go live to the streets of Wisconsin following that police shooting. And the COVID app controversy. Four months on, we find out just how effective it's been. Those stories and every new development tonight, 10.40. The Latest from 7 News. Sydney's most overcrowded schools, some at 300% capacity. The school's suffering and the new plan to fix it on 7 News, 6 o'clock. Tonight's 7 News headlines, hundreds of guests evacuated from a city hotel following a police review of quarantine breaches. A blazing car in the Sydney Harbour Tunnel has caused traffic chaos. And Qantas to slash another 2,500 jobs. Now the latest on our weather, here's David. Thanks very much, Fergo. Well, the dry weather continues. In fact, it'll see out the week. Frosty first thing tomorrow. Now, today's top, fresh, 17.5 degrees, coming off a low there of 6.9. It was frosty inland, as we can see here, and uh, all maxima range between, well, 15 and 17 degrees this afternoon. High pressure is the driving force behind our weather, and it's expected to, well, stick around for at least a week. It's, the system is what we call quasi-stationary. So a little change is expected in the overall pattern tomorrow, but uh, also given that the air mass across our state is so dry, frost will return to inland areas during the early hours of tomorrow morning. Now in the medium term, a lengthy dry spell is lining up our state. In fact, we're looking here at seven day rainfall totals, virtually not a drop in sight, but I'm confident on a seasonal scale, we'll end up with more than our fair share of spring rain 
as the climate dri driver, La Nina steps up a gear. Now, nationwide tomorrow, Melbourne, fine. Forecast top of around 15 degrees. For uh, Brisbane, cool, clear, mostly sunny conditions and around 21. Warmer through the tropical north. Check out Darwin, dry conditions and 35 degrees. And by the way, that's about three degrees above average for this time of year. For the state, we'll see some early fog patches mainly to the south, clearing to a fine and generally sunny day. But again, have a look at the overnight lows. Yes, extensive frost first thing and uh, light winds for, well, most of the state throughout the day. And as we drill a little bit deeper, we're expecting severe frost in the outer west. Look at some of the overnight lows here, down to minus two degrees in the MacArthur region. We're expecting zero in Liverpool, zero also in Blacktown, but clear sunny day will follow with just a gentle breeze. And of course, as we move on to our coastal waters, we're expecting uh, light and variable winds throughout the afternoon. For the uh, city, remaining dry, forecast top, around 18 degrees, coming off another cold start. But as we move on to the seven-day outlook, some good news. It's warming up as we sail towards the weekend. Another frosty start, though, is likely in our west for Thursday. We're expecting mid-20s across the weekend. Yes, a little taste of spring, a little bit early. So plenty of sunshine tomorrow, Mellon Fergo. Looking very nice. Indeed. Thank you, Brownie. That is Seven News for this Tuesday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. I'm Mark Ferguson from all the team. I hope you have a great night.